sorry, it's, a, it's been on my mind, you know, it's a light right as you uh, <laughs> It's been on my mind lately, because, you know, the economy kind of sucks, so you see that kind of stuff. So, ow, sorry. Don't know the voice of my answer. But, I gotta move. That's right, they're, they're setting up props over here. The, the most visible state ninjas in the world, everybody, just to get that out of the way. <laughs> right over here. Oh, like I said, the economy kind of not good. I mean, you know, he's talking that empty word, nothing on and on. But we wanted to offer you guys some advice because you're probably looking at the job market now. Probably not, maybe, kind of, sort of. Nope, okay. So we'd like to offer you some advice on what to do and what not to do on your next job interview. Knowing word is a good thing, actually. I'm just saying. Mr. Morse? Thanks for seeing me. Sorry I'm late. Don't worry about it. Um, so you are applying for the job as... A uh, research analyst. Okay. Do you happen to have a copy of your resume on you? I'm sorry. I, I thought I emailed you a copy. That's alright. Um, although, you might want to bring a copy of your resume with you in the future. Well, I was kind of hoping that I wouldn't be going to any job interviews in the future. You know what I mean? Well, it's... Always good to know these things. Did you or did you not graduate from this school? Um, that one did not, technically. Because you only have two semesters on here, but you still filled out that you received a bachelor's in finance. That's what I was going for, so. In the future, you should write down that you have a bachelor's in finance when you actually don't. Well, Trevor's interview is underway, and I think we've all noticed the mistakes that he's made, and I'm pretty sure that his potential employers noticed them as well. Let's take a look at some of them now. Uh, first of all, Trevor's shown up for this interview unprepared, hasn't he? Uh, it's always important to bring a hard copy of your resume, even if you've already sent one through email in advance. It shows that you're serious about the job and that you're prepared. Secondly, uh, it's never good to make jokes about already getting the job. It's too assuming, and it makes conversation awkward. Thirdly, uh, I think it's important to maintain eye contact and to keep your answer short and to the point. You got that, Trevor? Thanks, man, inside my head. Now, let's see if Trevor can dig himself out of this little hole that he's created. Look, I'm sorry I lied on my resume. I just, I just really wanted to impress you. And the fact that I was willing to lie to get this job could be a huge asset to this company. I mean, instead of lying to you, I could be lying for you. Okay. You know, you have really good eye contact. <laughs> I'm gonna write that down. You know, that sort of makes up for the whole lying on the resume thing. All right, Mr. Morse, what experience do you have in finance? I worked for three years in the finance department at the bank company. Uh. International. <laughs> Store. Business. Corporation. Oh, BCISBC. Oh, do you know Jeff Chrysler? Uh, yeah, he died. <laughs> oh my god. <sighs> we started at the same branch together. We were like brothers. <sighs> Phyllis, please send over a bouquet of flowers to Jeff's wife. Jeff Chrysler, 6 3 o'clock. <laughs> Trevor dug himself out of that hole, and then he picked up a big old shovel that we call liar. It's never good to lie in an interview. One lie leads to another, things compound the themselves, and soon they get rapidly out of hand. I think Trevor would do well to go through his tool shed of truth and find the cutting shears of honesty to free himself from this tangled web. Instead of focusing on untruths and falsehoods, Trevor might do well to focus on what he can bring to the company. Let's see where that approach takes him. He's twenty dollars for the job. <laughs> well, that was another tactic. Trevor's trying to convince his employer to overlook the bold-faced lying and the unpreparedness he's committed in the past two minutes by offering him a twenty-dollar bill. Uh, maybe instead of retardery, Trevor should—I uh, don't know—maybe not do the first thing that pops into his head. Let's see what happens when Trevor thinks about his actions. Uh, psych. <laughs> Just kidding. 
Yeah. Um, I have a crazy idea. How about I call Jeff in here and we'll just straighten this whole thing out. Alright? Yeah. Crazy. Phyllis, send in my three o'clock, please. Hey, Jeff, do you remember Trevor from BCISPC? Uh, sorry, I don't recall him me. Really? Because he seems to think that... <laughs> he, he was a zombie, man. He came here to eat your brains, I just tried to tell you. Oh my god! You saved my life. Welcome aboard, Mr. Morse. You start Monday. Thank you, sir.